How did you get the name Mountain Man? Actually, I give myself uh, the name Mountain Man because uh, I love the mountains. I used to spend a lot of time in the mountains and I did a lot of black powder shooting and with the black powder shooting you make all your own stuff. Your canes, your knives. I made, I made all my own stuff for black powder uh, shooting. And, uh, and But my real mountain name is Broken Sight. And I have a friend, his name is Zeke, and he's a character of all characters. And him and I went to the shooting line with our pistols to shoot a contest. Uh, and I got to the line, I got my pistol all loaded, went to the line, looked down the barrel, and my sight was broken half. The back sight was half missing. So I go, my gosh, I drove 200 miles and uh, I'm going to shoot. So I practiced a couple rounds and adjusted for the broken sight. And I went and shot the contest with a broken sight and I won. I won first place. And Zeke gave me the name Broken Sight, which stuck. And, uh, and that's how I got my name Zeke, is from Zeke, but uh, Mountain Man was a title that I put on myself. This stick here is a stick that I made as a prelude to the one downstairs because uh, uh, I, I wanted to get the colors and everything right. And then I messed up, but I think it's going to come out okay. This stick, that's, this is a stick, I said downstairs, this is a stick here. I made this stick so I get the colors on this stick. If you notice the Indian carbon, that's the cigar store Indian. And this here is a, is a totem pole. And then I got a little squirrel I carved that's going to fit in here. This cane here is uh, dogwood, and this is dogwood, and dogwood has a vine that grows in it. And you take the vine out, and here's my uh, powder horns I scrimshaw. I'm kind of slowing down on that. I got one to go. Well, I got several to go, but one I want to get done. You carved those? Yeah, I scrimshawed them. This is a Matthias Crest. Uh, this was my first powder horn I scrimshawed. Scrimshawing started out with whalers doing, oh, they didn't have to do, they scrimshawed the whale's teeth. Uh, and they get kind of fancy. The old powder horns that the uh, 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 mountain men carried were efficient. They, they carved on here, if they found a new valley with beaver in it, they would put a map in in case they got killed by the Indians on the way out and somebody found their powder horn and know where the beaver were. Wow. <laughs> Everybody gives credit to this person and that person, but uh, the mountain men are really the ones that settled the West. This cane came from the Mental Pioneer Power and Toy Show in uh, 1986. So I bought this because I liked it. But how do you take a 36 inch piece of wood on an airplane, huh? Well, you go to your buddy's garage and you make a cane out of it. And then when you get on the airplane, you make sure they see you need it. <laughs>10, 12, 13 years old, my uh, parents gave me a wood burning set. So that started me in wood burning. And I still have everything that they gave me. And uh, uh, I carved, I uh, burned several things out. And then uh, uh, I went camping and a guy was carving a walking stick out of uh, diamond willow. And so I said, I'm going to do that. So I carved a stick out of diamond willow and got the stick over here about 40 years ago. So that started me into doing sticks and I did some canes. Okay, this here is a piece of diamond willow. Okay, and what happens in certain places in the United States, the willow tree gets a disease and it forms these diamonds. Now this is a raw piece, this is how I buy it, okay. 
This is a diamond willow cane that is finished. This is how it looks when it's finished. This one I made about 50 years ago, 40 years ago, something like that. Anyhow, this here, uh, they cut a bunch of trees down on the golf course and we salvaged wood and this is, this is a, a manzanita of some kind. I've never seen it that straight. But anyhow, this is going to be my shepherd's tank. And I have a shepherd's cane to put on the top. And uh, I'm going to do this all in Egyptian art. And I'm going to burn it in. I'm not going to carve it in. This here is a stick that was, this is called my sippy pole. And the reason for that is it was taken out of the Mississippi River in New, uh, New Orleans. And uh, in the New Orleans area. And this little girl had pulled it out of the river. And this stick had been cleaned off the bark by the beavers that eat bark. And then this is a beaver cut. And then I carved an Indian head in. This is all the states it's been in. And this is my sippy pole, okay? And I traded this little girl for this stick. And she was a tough dealer. She knew I wanted that stick. So I had this long, it was at Monte Gras, and I had this long pair of beads. You put them around the neck and they touch the ground, right? And that's what she wanted. I didn't want to give up them beads, it was the only ones I had. But guess what? She's got the beads and I got the stick and we're both happy. And where do you do most of your work? I, uh, to give you a little history on it, I'm a docent at the Adobe, a 150-year-old Adobe. And uh, we have a, uh, every year we have a Adobe Days and the uh, Vista wood carvers used to show up. And I became a, a good friend with a wood carver out there. And uh, I visited with them and I talked with them. And I brought my sticks out and showed them to me. And they invited me to join their club. I do uh, uh, four hours a week wood carving at the club. But uh, most of my work is done in my garage where I have a, a full set of tools and I have a rule. Don't borrow a tool if you need it, buy it. So I love tools so I All right, I don't care. Okay, we're good. By the way, this stencil bunk is made out of all all uh, scrap. There's nothing here that I bought except this piece right here I bought because it's soft plastic and it holds your piece real nice. Alright, so we're going to we're going to proceed here. These are foot deals, you release it to move your work. Push it to tighten it down. Then you take your draw knife and you get it the right way. That's another tricky idea. And then you just start drawing off the mark. And this uh, this uh, takes it off about ten times faster than. And you release it, turn it about ten times faster than just doing it with a knife. Do you have plans to sell your finished work? I would like a new scooter, and this new scooter is $1,800, and my wife don't think I need it because I already have two, so I have to uh, make some money to buy this scooter that don't come out of the family coffins. Uh, mostly the way I market uh, my product is uh, I'll take a cane, and uh, I'll walk into the bank, and the bank girl says, Oh, I like your cane. Where did you buy that? No, I said I didn't buy it. I made it. And she's immediately interested. I've sold, uh, uh, I've sold two canes uh, at Walmart to people that work at Walmart. Uh, I have a cane going to Canada. Uh, uh, no, this walking stick going to Canada, which is going to uh, uh, help along with my purchase of that new scooter and it's going to be a real nice cane or a walking stick I believe. So that's my plans. He is looking for his food. Here you go.